We are rolling already. So the afternoon rolls on here at Nauticon. Thank you all for uh, attending some of these wonderful talks. I hope you're having a good time. If uh, you're not, let us know and we'll see what we can do to change that for you. But otherwise, let's keep on rolling. Trevor Ryder is a graduate student from Bowling Green State University and has a deep interest in digital audio and music as they pertain to computer science. He also likes to lay on a couch, eat Funyuns, and play video games. This talk marries both these things. Today he's going to talk about using the Wiimote for making music, or at the very least making annoying sounds to piss off your neighbors or roommates. We all like doing that. By the end of this session, you'll have a good idea about how you could use a Wiimote to your musical arsenal. Also, he wanted me to mention that Trevor started his career as a rule-breaking heel tagging with fellow Texan Dick Murdoch to form the tag team, the Texas Outlaws, and the American Wrestling Association. In 1974, Trevor turned face after turning on tag team partner Pac Song and manager Gary Hart during a match in Florida against Eddie and Mike Graham. This led him to break out as a solo face superstar, primarily in Florida, referring to himself as Stardust, the White Soul King, and the American Dream, a working class hero. Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor Ryder. I didn't think you'd actually do that. That's so sweet. I appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I think I wanted to answer the question why you would try doing this. And um, I wanted to mention like Rock Band and Guitar Hero, right? So from a video game perspective, I think Rock Band and Guitar Hero are excellent ideas, right? They're fun games. But from a musical perspective, I think they're horrid, horrible ideas. And I, I'll tell you why this, and I'll fight you outside in the hallway if you disagree with me on this one. Because if you play through Guitar Hero perfectly, uh, and you get 100% or whatever, on your, you know, 100% perfection, you have no gestural, um, you're not performing any human gestures in that music. You play it mechanically, 100% through, you have no other way to play it other than what's programmed in there. So from a musical standpoint, I think that sucks. From a video game standpoint, I think that kind of goes along with the rest of the video game paradigm. So when I want to do a talk like this, I've been doing a lot of work in my uh, graduate studies and uh, making music with the Wii Remote. But I started off with the question of why can't we uh, make music with video game controllers instead of trying to emulate things like guitars. And so I wanted to mention a guy by the name of um, Jeffrey Stolle. And he's an electroacoustic musician. I believe he's out of Oregon um, in an art college in Oregon. And he wrote a piece called Things I Do With My Fingers. And uh, it is mind-numbing. It's 20 minutes long. And it's a little, little hard to bear through the entire thing. But it is neat because he's taking these video game controllers and he's... Um, putting gestural human information through them and using that to tell a story. It's a visual and audio composition. So as he's shaking the Wii remote and twiddling his fingers, uh, visualizations of him like brushing his teeth and all these things he's doing with his fingers and sounds that go along with it are played along. So there's this human gestural thing going on um, with a video game controller I think is really neat and could be used for music. So straight out your blister pack, if you pick up a Wii remote, you get 11 discrete buttons. The power button does not count. It's actually a... Uh, a special function to turn on the Wii, right? So you get sensors on three axes of movement, and you get an IR camera, and Bluetooth connectivity, and that's a lot of that's some good stuff for uh, a human interface device. So with those three axes of movement, right, you can tell pitch and roll, but not yaw. So you can move. Think of um, a marble on a china plate, right? That's kind of weird visualization. But if you have a china plate in your hand and you move it up and down, the marble moves up and down. If you move it side to side. The marble moves side to side. But if you could spin that plate on a stick perfectly, the marble would stay in the center and no information, the position wouldn't change. That's why um, you can't tell positional information rotating about the axis of gravity in the Wii Remote. And that's actually why Nintendo chose to use infrared sensors instead of putting a, uh, oh, well, I can't remember what it's called. This slipped my mind. A gyroscope. You would actually need a gyroscope to tell that rotational information about the uh, Y gravity axis. And so about that IR camera, it's kind of an IR camera, but you're not peeking in your neighbor's window at 3 in the morning with, it, um, with a computer. More specifically, it's actually sensing light blobs. So I need everybody to go back to your high school biology classes and put on your pseudopods and think like an amoeba for a second, right? So if you can recall for one minute, then an amoeba can't, doesn't have any eyes, right? But it, does, it is able to sense light. So if you have a flashlight, you know, if you close your eyes and you have a flashlight, you can sense a directional light in a position, but you don't know what the hell it is, right? That's kind of what the uh, infrared sensor on the front of the Wii Remote does. And so the, the Wii Remote can actually sense up to four positions and track their locations. 
And believe me, this is no end to the really shitty puns of the Wii for reiterating the point. But, you know, there's a whole barrel of really bad puns to go from. Now, just to reiterate what we're getting at, you can get the discrete button info, the accelerometer information, uh, the infrared information, and those are the human interface tools that we're going to use to build our instrument. So first, we've got to talk a little bit about, about uh, connectivity, right? So let's talk about the Bluetooth. Um, you must get a remote-compatible interface, um, Bluetooth interface. Now, that's kind of a weird thing to say because it's very generic. But the problem is that Wemo is a very finicky device, and so it only works with some Bluetooth stacks. Now, there's a, uh, some safe adapters you can look at on wheelie.org um, that it has a good safe list that I can go off of, and I actually found one off of that where I got mine. Um, if you have a MacBook or any of the Mac built-in Bluetooth, those work really well as w or, or safe to use. But the problem is, is that the, depending on your operating system and uh, your Bluetooth stack and how you're doing it, that's going to dictate exactly how you're going to connect the Wii Remote. So I don't really have the time to go into every nuance of that. So instead of talking about the stacks and stacks like 2110 you would talk about, we only got a half hour, but um, if you have Windows, like what I'm using, I have a thing called Blue Soleil, the Blue Soleil Bluetooth stack, and that works beautifully. If you saw me connect it, it was literally a one-click connection. If you have a um, standard Windows Bluetooth stack, it's just like adding a new piece of hardware each time. So it takes like three or four minutes, and that can get kind of draining on your brain. But uh, I also used it on Linux for a while, and I was able to just write a script to pop it and automate it. So that's kind of a plus two if you're using it on that. So if you haven't uh, seen me when I turn it on, it literally is as easy as hitting two buttons on the Wii Remote, clicking on my, my uh, Wii Remote, and then hitting Connect. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this thing called Pure Data, which is an audio programming language. Now, for anybody, is anybody here familiar with Pure Data? One, maybe? Okay, that's good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anybody to even know what it was. Um, it is an audio programming language made by Miller Puckett to make DSP processing really easy and quick for people that aren't familiar with, uh, you know, regular programming paradigms. So we're going to use pure data, this programming, it's free, wait, wait, I'll get into that in a second, but it's going to let us take the information from the Wii Remote and we can either output that uh, through our, D our uh, sound chip, just like what I'm doing here and sending it back to there, or we could actually hook up a MIDI cable or a MIDI uh, interface and take output from that and make all sorts of, run our uh, synthesizers that way. So um, some of the benefits of Pure Data, it is free, which was the number one reason for me using it. And it is cross-platform. Um, there's ports for most major platforms. Um, and it's made specifically for MIDI and synthesizer work and for people who aren't uh, really familiar with programming paradigms. And it also has we remote objects that we can place directly in our code. Now, when I say place in it, it's interesting because pure data, the programming environment and sort of the sandbox environment are the same thing. It's an interpreted language, so you can play with it, add things, change things, and still keep it running. And that really helps out when you're developing uh, DSP. So this is a patch that I had written just a little bit ago, uh, a couple days ago maybe, and it's a mess. And I apologize if you've never seen this before. This probably looks gross as hell. But I'm going to go through this, and I'll make sure this looks a little bit familiar before the end of this uh, presentation. So you might be saying, oh, shit, that looks horrifying. And you're right, because if you saw that list there, I didn't say it was easy to learn, and there's a reason. But there are some simple audio tools that we can use um, when we're making our instruments, right? So we have oscillators. We can run sine waves or, or uh, square waves or triangle waves, things like that. We can make noises like that. Or we can load sound samples into a buffer, or we can use basic mathematical calculations to form our own sound samples, and we can easily manipulate MIDI data in and out. <coughs> so this is a little simple, uh, simpler patch that I'm actually using in the um, thing that I wrote today. And if you see over here, oh, I just have one uh, thing called a sound filer. It's reading one command, and it just reads a sound file in there. And then I'm able to use this object over here that says tab play to read this array, which I referenced as drums. And it was easy as that to just play back a sound file by sending information, uh, like the play message, you know, through a pipeline. Now, information is passed through these lines we see here. Uh, you can think of those as like information pipes. Now, this is um, the actual pure data interface for Windows. Now, other objects are available for different operating systems, right? 
but uh, for Windows, we're going to be using something called WeSense. And actually, you just drop the DLL in your library of uh, objects for pure data, and it comes up. You can pop it right in. Right here's my WeSense object, and I'm unpacking the data from that We object, WeSense object. And you can see the three to the left, I have three outputs there. Those are my three axes of information. And the giant line of Fs over there is the uh, output for my discrete button information. So it was as easy as that to put this into a programming environment and grab the information. And this is just a better illustration of the, um, the discrete button presses. These little things here are called toggle switches. And as you press buttons, the little axes will show up in them. And I can, I can demonstrate that uh, after this presentation here. So going back to this original thing that I uh, written a couple days ago, I wanted to look at some of these objects. This thing that says PD Wiimote is actually a sub patch. Now I can write, I can start, I can create a patch or an object by typing PD space and then the name of that object, and I can create these little abstractions. It's like uh, patches inside patches. So instead of having everything laid out in one giant mess, I've wrapped up that Wiimote patch, that WeSense patch in a block, and I'm only taking the information that I want to use, which is the three axes of movement, the A and B button, and the front one and two buttons. And then I have some other patches that I'll get into when I demonstrate the patch live, that um, I'm doing some number manipulations and some sound synthesis on the fly. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, number formats coming out of the uh, WeSense object. Now, the accelerometer values are actually, oh, I got something in my eye. Uh, the accelerometer values are normalized to gravity units, uh, negative and positive, depending on direction. So you get three um, accelerometer numbers, uh, three, those three number uh, data sets, negative one and one, if you're just rotating. But if you force it real hard, you'll get uh, that, that force in Gs. So if you force it real hard, you can get four. If you can throw four Gs, you'll get four Gs in that direction. All the buttons have Boolean ones and zeros. So if, it's, uh, if, the, if the number button is on, it's on. If it's zero, it's uh, off. And I'll get into that change thing in a second when I demonstrate the whole patch. So this, basically, the pattern of use that we're going to be doing is that we're identifying some form of input that we like to use with. Right? So we have, we've ever been over how the... Uh, the different modes of input on the Wii Remote, but we're going to apply that to certain parameters of digital music. Well, that could be things like the frequency of the oscillators, or the position in a sample table you know, of where your playback is, so you can control its playback speed, things like that. And it just sounds really boring when I'm talking about this, but when you hear it live, you can see that there's, I'll be imparting some sort of gesture to it. And of course, we could send MIDI data or another example I had here was just moving a filter, like a wah pedal. So if you had like a notch filter for frequency, you can move that up and down. Now this seems like a horrible stretch to go from, but please bear with me for one second, right? When I first saw this painting by Jackson Pollock, I was probably in eighth grade, maybe, maybe high school, uh, freshman year. And then when I first saw it, I thought it was complete trash because I didn't think, I said, I thought to myself, how could you call that art? It looks like a mess. But as I got older, I realized that when you see a painting like that, it wasn't the fact that what it looks like, what it looks like is one thing. But one of the important things about a painting like this that Jackson Pollock did, and most of Jackson Pollock's work, was that there's this, informa this gestural information that's imparted in the, in the image. So he was doing things like poking holes in paint cans and throwing them around the room, right? and then rolling sand up in his, in his paint, and then uh, you know, letting it drip on the floor in interesting patterns. And so when you look at it that way, there's all this human gestural information that makes a painting really interesting, and it brings a certain humanity down in it. And I'll get to the point of that in a second. But I did want to show off my patch. So here's some free samples. And I'm going to pass this around. You can all mess with this while I talk. So going back to that rock band thing, right? So 
in rock band or in Wii music, you only play back what's already written there, right? And you have no gestural information that you can add to it, except for the, maybe the wah bar on the guitars, right? But you have no musical gesture information, really, that you can add. And that's what I think is missing when you think of, you know, these, these video games as uh, musical instruments. I don't think you can think of them as mu musical instruments because you're not, there's no humanity and no gesture, gesture in it. <laughs> now, uh, let's see if I can, if you hold down the, uh, the B button, I think Josh knows. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna sort of explore this patch and I can't see it on my screen so it's kind of awkward for me. You can see I just put that we uh, we sense object here, and I'm grabbing the accelerometer information right here. And so the first thing I have is when you hit the A button, it throws a, a random, not a random, according to the position of the of uh, the Wii remote, it will uh, play a small oscillator and then put an envelope on top of that, sort of like it's a hit, just a <laughs> just like a quick sampling hit according to a frequency. Now that's not. Um, it isn't spaced out in like note pitches. It's just, you know, 300 hertz, 301 hertz, 30, you know, 299 hertz. It's not really musical, but it is an idea that you can put gesture and impart that in a sound. You can see whenever it hits the uh, B button, a little X shows up. And that can tell you and help you debug when you're using something like Pure Data to do this. <laughs> That sound sample is actually uh, the Price is Right failure sound. That noise right now is actually a low-pass filter which is getting hit by both an oscillator and a white noise. And so as you would move it around like that, you can get sort of a swirly effect. And that, uh, if you hear that little, those little guitar note things, those actually aren't samples at all. That is an implementation of the car plus strong string pluck, pluck string algorithm. So that's entirely synthesized. You know, so I'm not running that through any external hardware or anything. That's just running on my tiny little netbook. And so you're able to leverage the information of other people that have done, people's work that they've done with uh, pure data, you know, like this car plus strong algorithm. I was just literally a drop in and I was able to use all that information. <laughs> and so that really noisy part in the end with the, uh, it sounds like the pig squeal, I loaded the Price is Right uh, failure sound <laughs> into the, uh, my sample bank over there with the loose horn. And what I'm doing is whenever that button gets hit, it does a playback at a certain frequency. And so it plays back those samples uh, through that sample bed at different rates. And it looks like a mess, but as you shake it around, you can jostle up the playback speed, and all of a sudden there's this gestural information on that that isn't just straight playback. So I know this is kind of a small crowd, so if there's any questions I'd love to, to answer or uh, head up. Any idea? And does this look uh, confusing to anybody? How's it? What's up? The infrared. Okay. The question was um, was asking about the IR feature, and do I need any extra equipment, uh, or is that all I need? Well, the thing is, is that uh, for the particular Windows implementation of, of the Wii Mode object in Pure Data, uh, the I, the infrared uh, uh, information. Isn't, isn't passed, that isn't part of the driver. One of the problems with the Windows implementation of this is that um, the Wiimote driver, whoever made it, just sort of abandoned it in progress and left it as a work in progress and nobody can get a hold of them. But um, if you use the Linux version or other things like that, what happens is all you, all you need is an infrared LED. Um, and you need one that's sizably strong. Uh, I would recommend one that's probably 200 milliamps of, of power rating and maybe a wider degree of, of radiation. But really, any infrared source will pick it up, and it'll immediately start getting inf information output from those, those outputs. Um, the actual Wii, uh, Wii uh, video game system has two 
blocks of infrared information that are averaged to sort of be in the center of your television. So that's why you have that little light bar. There's two groups of infrared LEDs. So the really, that really is all you need. Is just, you can actually use two candles if you'd like. If you have a dark room, turn everything off. Uh, you can move your you get that information by putting a candle or two candles lit up. Anything else? Yes, Becca. Do you have a question? Thank you. Um, yeah, I was curious about how many of these devices could you play simultaneously? I bl this uh, particular one can take four simultaneously. Um, Jeffrey Stolett's piece, uh, he actually uses two, one in both hands, and he, all he uses is the accelerometer information, he's shaking them around. Um, one of the neat things about pure data, though, is that you can, you can network computers, right? And so you can put four on one, book, one, one laptop, four on another, four on another. You can chain these things up and send that information back and forth. So right. really, it's unlimited. Right, so you can port it through open sound control. Yeah, absolutely. For absolutely. Okay, cool. Anything else? Could I help? Well, going back to the, uh, if nobody has any other questions. I'm sorry, was there another question? Yeah, sorry. Actually, I just thought of something that would just be cool in general. Um, maybe in your free time, like set up like a, a virtual drum set so that when you have like two emotes, you can play the drum. Like, mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Like, if, you, if you did that, I'd like to. I'd like to know just because uh, it'd be a lot cheaper than a digital drum set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the question is, if you could build a digital drum set on that, and that's kind of what the Wii Drums is doing, except for the fact that you're only playing back um, portions of a given drum drum track, right? But it's certainly, you could certainly try to do something interesting and maybe it wouldn't be a, a perfect digital drum set, but you, maybe you can do something with how if you hold a certain button down and you put a certain force in a certain direction, it plays a certain drum hit. So you're almost creating a new uh, drum instrument where you could play something uh, and learn it yourself, you know, just in, in, in a small space, uh, spa, uh, airspace. And of course, you could also use the infrared information to get positional information, and you could um, quantize that. So if it's on this part of the, the, the Wiimote's camera, it would play this as opposed to this. Any other questions? OK, so I just wanted to bring it back to that Jackson Pollock painting one more time, is that I believe one of the most important things in music and in art, and art in general is the impar imparting human gesture. And so this seems really silly and that we're using a video game you know, interface to make music. But in another way, I don't think it is that silly because we're still doing the same thing that many artists do. We're imparting human gestural information and, and making something. And so I'd like to leave you with that and uh, thank you for coming out.